Sarah and I are presenting a research paper that was published by the Protein Society in 2018 titled A New Structural Class of Bacterial Thioester Domains Reveals a Slipknot Topology by Ona Miller, Mark Banfield, and Ulrich Swarzlinek. So in order to understand this article, we first have to understand some background information about bacteria and surface proteins. Uh, so bacteria present uh, proteins on their surface in order to bind to other tissues and materials in their environment and to interact with other microbes. Um, so this study focuses on the three-dimensional structure of a very specific kind of um, surface protein called TIE or Thai proteins. Uh, and those proteins contain three unique kinds of intramolecular connections, so cross-links is what they're called. Um, and that's when parts of the amino acids are covalently bonded to each other. So in TIE or TIE proteins, um, they have isopeptide and ester bonds, which um, help to stabilize the surface protein, uh, and help it withstand pressure. And they also have uh, thioester bonds, which um, are the main topic of study uh, for this paper. And they, um, actually have a role in the bacteria's uh, ability to adhere to other molecules. So the thioester bond itself will react to uh, a target molecule and form a covalent bond so that the bacteria is attached to its target. Um, and those uh, cross-links specifically are located in the thioester domain of the protein, or the TED, or the TED. <laughs> um, and so in prior research, uh, scientists have determined through multiple sequence alignment um, that there are two classes of TEDs, class one and class two. Um, and they determined this because their primary sequences um, fell within two classes. Um, so for this study, the researchers are trying to show a three-dimensional structure that um, kind of supports the differences in primary structure. So they are illustrating and determining the three-dimensional structure of class two TEB proteins uh, because class one has already been determined. Um, so in order to determine this, uh, researchers first picked three different kinds of Thai proteins, uh, BA Thai, SA Thai, and EMF Thai. Um, and each of these come from different bacteria. So First, um, for their methods, they had to um, uh, they isolated the D or they amplified the DNA that was responsible for uh, creating the TEDs in those bacteria, and they took that DNA and they used it to express those proteins in E. coli, uh, and then they harvested the proteins from the E. coli and purified them, um, and from that point, they were able to analyze them using x-ray crystallography, um, which is probably the most important method that they used in this process. Uh, and x-ray crystallography uses the diffraction patterns formed from x-rays hitting the protein, um, bouncing off and forming diffraction patterns. Um, and they measure the angles and the intensity of those beams in order to discover the three-dimensional structure uh, of the, the protein that that's studied. So they use a very specific type of x-ray diffraction called SAD or um, single wave, so single wavelength anom anom <laughs> anomalous uh, diffraction, um, which is a type of x-ray crystallography that has the least amount of damage to the protein itself. Um, so Using this, they, they mapped out the different three-dimensional structures of uh, the three class two TEDs that they were studying. Um, so in addition to that, there was kind of a side experiment where they were testing to see the binding affinity of um, BA tie to collagen. Um, and they tested this using ELISA binding assays. Uh, and they um, they placed collagen from rat, cow, and human on uh, amino plates and tested to see if those 
proteins would bind to collagen. Um, but the main, the main method that we should understand for this um, is the x-ray diffraction because this would allow them to figure out the three-dimensional structure. So Miller et al. used these methods to study the structures of the three tie proteins that contain the class II TETs. So the ESIMS determined molecular masses for each of the proteins that were lighter than the predicted masses, and the selenium SAD phasing revealed continuous electron density between the cysteine and glutamine residues. Both of these pieces of information support and confirm the presence of one thioester bond in each of the proteins, and therefore the presence of a TET. The selenium SAD phasing was also used to determine the remaining structural information, and it revealed that all three proteins had very similar tertiary structures, despite having amino acid sequences that differed. So once the TEDs were confirmed to be in all three proteins, then a protein comparison server was used to find other proteins that had similar structures. They found that the proteins containing class one TEDs were the most structurally similar and that most of the structural similarity took place in the upper lobe of their TEDs. So you can see the gray portions are the similar and they consist of a six-stranded anti-parallel beta barrel and a three helix bundle. The only other proteins that they found to be similar to the proteins containing class II TEDs were proteins containing immunoglobulin-like folds, which had a structure similar to the lower lobes of the class II TEDs. While some proteins have been found with some structural similarities to class II TEDs, no known proteins resemble the combination of folding seen in a class II TED. Uh, they were also able to match the indels, or the insertions of the amino acids, um, identified in previous studies, and they were able to match those up with the structural differences between the two classes. The first indel was found in class 1 TEDs, but not class 2, and it caused the fourth alpha helix that's present in class 1 TEDs, but absent in the class 2 TEDs. The second indel was responsible for the replacement of a 10 residue linker found in class 1 TEDs with a seven-stranded 75 residue beta sandwich, which is found in class two TEDs, and that's the portion hanging down. Uh, these are the two main distinguishing structural features of the class two TEDs. Uh, despite these differences, the thioester bond between the cysteine and glutamine residues are conserved in both TEDs, uh, both classes of TEDs. But in class two TEDs only are the beta strands that contain the residues involved in the thioester bond extended to form a twisted beta hairpin that complements the beta barrel subdomain and forms the slip knot structure that's characteristic of class two TEDs. They speculate that this structure plays a role in the stability of TED adhesion and likely has to undergo a change in order to, um, when a covalent receptor is recognized. Both TED classes also conserve glutamine and tryptophan residues that create stabilizing hydrogen bonds with the cysteine involved in the thioester bond. Access to the thioester bond is restricted in class two TEDs by two structural features. First, there's an extended loop between beta strands A and B, and this is known as the specificity loop. It restricts access to the thioester bond and is believed to contribute to substrate specificity. The second structural feature is the formation of a deep pore around the thioester bond, which makes it hard to access. These restrictions imply that class II TEDs have to undergo some sort of structural and conformational change in order to make the thioester bond available to adhere to its target. Now, the researchers tried to determine what the biological target is using the BA tie protein as well as ELISA, but they were unsuccessful because the protein didn't bind to any of the target molecules. So the biological target of the protein remains unknown. So overall, the data collected through this research has provided a structural basis for the differentiation between class one and class two TEDs that are found in tie surface proteins. 
The beta sandwich between alpha-3 and beta strand P is the main distinguishing structural feature of class II TEDs. This inserted feature is critical in the formation of the slipknot-like structure that's characteristic of the class II TEDs. This research might be of use for later identification of new classes of TEDs. It could also be used to aid in further understanding the fun functional significance of structural differences. And finally, it can help contribute to the development of treatment for bacterial infections.